can you elaborate the concept of ideal village and the uh, role of wheels foundation in it well thank you first of all for uh, hosting this uh, I am uh, Suresh Shinoy. I'm the president of Wheels uh, Global Foundation. I was uh, involved from the very founding of the, for, uh, of the uh, organization. And uh, Wheels was formed in response to a challenge from President Abdul Kalam at a Pan-IIT conference on how the alumni of the Indian Institutes of Technology can help solve the big problems of the world. And uh, in a subsequent meeting, we agreed and to focus on what we think are the biggest problems, which is water, health, energy, education, rural livelihoods, and sustainability, which is the acronym for WHEELS. Uh, then, as we started doing projects, uh, you know, just for water or just for healthcare and so on, we also realized that. Uh, uh, in rural transformation and development, they are all very interrelated. You cannot have good health without clean water. In order to have clean water, you need energy. People need to be educated and so on. So we took an approach of a more holistic, integrated manner for rural development, which is looking at the whole picture, you know, in terms of what is available locally, what needs to be augmented and so on. And we adopted a process called SMART, which looks at the strengths of a, a region. We, we think about measurable outcomes, uh, you know, apply, you know uh, apply solutions uh, as appropriate to that region. We try to come up with solutions that are repeatable and then use technology to scale it. So that's what SMART stands for. Uh, and we adopted, uh, a bunch of villages, seven, seven villages in the Aravali district of Gujarat as a pilot project, and we learned a lot of lessons. Later on, we uh, found out that Stanford University had something very similar uh, called Ideal Village, and their concepts were very, very similar to what Wheels was doing. So we decided to join hands and uh, do things collaboratively. And uh, the first Ideal Village conference was conducted by Stanford, Sunny Anand and Sundar and others. We used to have, uh, we still do, wheels conferences, but we decided that we are going to do it jointly. So whereas uh, Ideal Village takes a similar look, wheels has focused primarily on the technology aspects of it. So can you throw some light on the key outcomes which have been there uh, from this Ideal Village Conference? Surely. Um, so as I've said that, you know, uh, we've been around since 2006. Uh, we were formally incorporated in 2013. Uh, and we've done a lot of projects uh, and with very, well, you know, very impactful projects. But when we sat back and thought about, you know, uh, how, how have we impacted, you know, the rural, you know, areas in India and how can we scale it? It also struck us that in 25 years, India will be 100 years since independence. So what is India going to look like in 100 years? And uh, we also looked at the demographic and we said that more than 850 million people in India live in villages, okay, which are, you know, uh, which have about 30 to 40 percent of the population is under the age of 30. So for India to really transform into a world economic power, it cannot happen without rural transformation, without giving more attention to rural development. And uh, so we, we decided that, you know, one of the main outcomes from this conference has to be raising awareness and start a movement where all the NGOs and industry and government are focused on how technology can be applied for rural transformation. And this is not just any, you know, it's not rocket science. We're not trying to, you know, do something out of the ordinary. The technology applications might be something as simple as knowing how to replenish water 
you know, uh, uh, emptying water aquifers in the in the regional areas. Uh, it might be as simple as uh, you know helping farmers to apply better technology and better methods and processes for improving you know agricultural output. It might be using robotics and solar energy to dry vegetables for better storage. So, uh, so our key outcome from this conference that we hope is raise to to raise awareness and start a movement so that we are all working in the same direction. We are all pulling the cart in the same direction, if you will, industry, academia, NGOs, and government. Okay, so we, that's why, you know, that can only be done through uh, collaboration. What uh, some of my colleagues in wheels like Ms. Gauri Kumar has called collaborative governance, uh, so that people talk to each other, people collaborate and work in the same direction. So that's the number one outcome that we hope to achieve. Secondly, uh, the IITs have been premier institutions in India and are now getting recognized worldwide as a tremendous source of manpower from India. Uh, and there's a lot of technology that is being developed at these IITs. So we want to also help our, the academic institutions in India to start adopting local regional colleges and start to mentor them so that this technology can, can kind of diffuse from the research and development laboratories to the field. So one of the key outcomes we are looking at is how these IITs and other major institutions of learning can adopt regional institutes. So for example, in the wheels ecosystem, we are working with another organization called Sobus who is setting up a center of excellence at the Sri Vithal Engineering and Research Institute in Pandarpur, okay, which is a regional college in Maharashtra. And, uh, and IIT Bombay, through the uh, Sitara program at IIT Bombay, we are trying to see if we can help mentor them and bring in technologies that can be applied in the rural areas. We are also doing similar work in Shamlaji College in Aravali district. So we want other universities and colleges like Benares Hindu University and even the medical institutions to start looking at ways in which they can adopt regional colleges, regional uh, institutions to bring the technology, bring the modern concepts for providing services and transforming you know, life in villages. So IIT also has a group called Pan-IIT Reach for India, PARFI. And there's a gentleman by the name of Kalyan Chakravarti who will be speaking at our conference. And he has done some phenomenal work in Jharkhand, which is highly successful for skills development, for healthcare, for education, and so on. So learn from them. Learn from people who are, who are doing things, who have been doing things for a long time, and figure out how we can scale that operation. So that's one of the major outcomes that we are looking for. Then, of course, last but not least, all this takes money. And, uh, you know, no one NGO or even the government cannot do it all by itself. So we are all relying on each other. So we want to make sure that some of the policies and processes that are being adopted by the government for how CSR money can be applied, how the foreign you know, currency transactions can be smoothly and verifiably you know, received in India. You know, so the FCRA regulations for some of those policies and procedures have to be in place so that people can collaborate. They can receive money for, for social you know, impact projects. Uh, there are a lot of venture capital companies now that are focused on social enterprises. Okay? So that is a very important uh, uh, aspect of rural transformation. What we have learned is that without an economic interest of uh, local peoples where they can actually make a living out of it. You know, the projects can die over time. So uh, we want to make sure that, that there is a sense of entrepreneurship at the center and at the core of all work that we do. So these are all some of the outcomes that we hope we can convey during the conference. So we are all, you know, on the same page, so to speak. And what are the opportunities for and the challenges for these NGOs who are going to connect with Ideal Village? 
So it is phenomenal. I mean, it is beyond imagination. Mm -hmm. So as I said, the, the population in the rural parts of India is uh, over 850 million people. Right. That is more than North America and Europe combined. Okay. And the population is very young. So we are talking about developing a market that has the potential of having a consumer base, which is larger than Europe and America combined. Okay. So from the industry perspective, this is a neglected segment. People have really focused on, uh, uh, you know, major urban areas. And I'll relay, relate a very quick story. I met a young girl, must have been 12 or 13 years old, in, in a small village in Gujarat when I was traveling there. And I asked her, what does she dream about? And she had a smile on her face and she said, I want to become a beautician. I mm -hmm. want to learn how to put lipstick. <laughs> okay. And I talked to my colleagues and I said, you know, uh, look at this girl. You know, I mean, she's thinking about very simple things. And I said, why do you want to learn how to wear lipstick? She said, well, because in the next several years, I'm going to get married. And I have a lot of friends who are in the same position. And none of us have ever put lipstick on. Mm -hmm. So I think there is a market. So if I become a beautician, I can do that as a service. And I can even make a living. That's the entrepreneurial spirit. She doesn't have to know math and science and physics to do that. She's looking for a skill. And when we identify those kinds of opportunities, imagine how big that market is. I mean, if you are a manufacturer of lipstick or a manufacturer of cosmetics, that one 12-year-old girl's dream represents an enormous potential for commercial activity. And it can happen through philanthropy. It can happen through a skills development project. So, so so that's one of the major opportunities. Now, the other second one I'll tell you is that one of the studies that we did said that uh, uh, almost uh, 3,500 village clusters in India represent something like 60% or 65% of India's produce. I don't know how accurate that is, but it's pretty much you know very close to reality. And almost 60-70% uh, of the produce is lost or, or destroyed from the point of production to the point of consumption, okay? Because of lack of storage, because of lack of refrigeration and so on. And at the IITs, we know of uh, uh, technologies that have been developed for very little cost, where the life of these produce can be extended. And this, these products can be produced locally, you know, within those villages. So if you look at the supply chain all the way from production to consumption, the, there can be over 10, 12 million jobs that, we can, that, that can be cre created just by improving the supply chain. Just by adopting some simple technologies to make sure that the goods get to the market complete, completely. So these are all opportunities that have a commerciality attached to it, but it can be spurred through philanthropic investments. Okay, so so that's that's one major op major opportunity. Now there are challenges, challenges of education, you know, because this doesn't happen without some basic uh, education, the right type of education. Yeah, it's not science, you know, STEM education per se. It, you don't have to teach a person how to make a watch to tell time. Okay, they just need the watch so they can tell time. So similarly, when we go to these farmers or you know, villages, they don't have to know what's behind the technology. Mm -hmm. They just have to know how it has to be applied. Okay, so so the opportunities are great. The challenges are many, okay. Uh, but nothing that we cannot overcome. Okay, thank you so much for your insightful inputs. Is there something else you would like to add at this point? Absolutely, because this conference is a beginning. Right. You know, it is not uh, an end to itself, okay? So when I say it's a movement, a movement by definition is a group of people or a large set of people coming together with a common purpose. So what we are hoping by launching this movement at this conference 
is to continue that movement for the next 25 years, you know, at least till India becomes 100 years old. And hopefully we can all turn back and look at this conference as the time when this whole movement started. Okay. So in 2023, we are hosting the same conference, a similar conference here in Washington, D.C. I'm in Washington, D.C. And the problems are not uncommon. Even in the United States, we have similar issues. Okay. So, so it's not just about India. It is about the United States as well and perhaps the rest of the world. We have speakers from Africa and other places also coming to the conference. So we hope that, uh, uh, that this is the first of many and this movement will continue, you know, where industry and government, NGOs, academia will all come together on an annual basis, alternating between here and India, between United States, United States and India, and perhaps other countries also. And uh, one of the fond dreams we have is to create a platform, such as the Indian Institute of Development, IID, for example, where all these NGOs and government officials, et cetera, can meet periodically, periodically to share ideas, to share best practices, where students, NGOs can come and practice uh, the implementation and learn about the implementation of specific types of solutions. So I, I hope that our conversation with cyber media will also continue beyond this conference where you know, and over the years, we'll jointly work on, on getting the word out because media is a very important part of this because that's one of the ways in which we can spread the word, if you will. So thank you very much for this opportunity. Thank you so much to you also.